Hey guys, we're at Electrify Expo New York. I'm here with Seth Cutler, uh, CEO of IANA. Uh, we had a chance to meet Seth a year ago and when they were launching in uh, Apex, North Carolina. Uh, it's nice meeting you again, Good seeing Seth. you again, yeah. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, awesome. Um, so tell me what you guys have been up to in the last year. Um, how long, how has the growth been for you guys? Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. So uh, I think when we met last year, we were at our first site in Apex. At that point, we had like one or two sites uh, move, moving forward. Um, today we've got dozens of sites live for customers and uh, you'll see that uh, we're over 900 bays, uh, charging bays in construction and beyond. So we've been accelerating our growth in the last year. We've contracted over 3,000 charging bays across the country, which is you know, about 10% of our goal to be live at the end of the decade. So the uh, team's been hustling and cranking to uh, deliver great charging for, uh, for the network. That's amazing. So how many locations are live right now, do you think? So we've got about 32 sites live right now. 32 sites. And dozens more that are uh, finishing construction this month into next month, um, as well as others behind that are in construction. That's a really aggressive build plan. I love to see it. Yeah. Uh, actually, we on the way here, we stopped in Scranton to check out that location. How was it? It was amazing. I could drop that clip in the end of this video of our experience. Um, love it. There was 10 or five dispensers, 10 cords, yep. four NACs, six CCS, uh, we saw other customers there too, which is good to see. Yeah. People, the word is getting out. Yep. Um, I love how there is kind of different payment methods too, because you could just tap, like use Apple Pay or credit card to pay. Yep. There was like an app activation, I think. Do you know which apps are compatible right now? Yeah, so look, we've done a lot to really um, ensure that we have an open platform from a payment perspective. So everything from credit card, roaming with ChargePoint, uh, interoperability with OEMs. We announced uh, plug and charge last week with Rivian, right? So we, I saw we, that, yeah. So even beyond just our investors and partners, we're even bringing on other OEMs here to support us in terms of being able to really uh, ensure a seamless customer experience, right? How do we make sure we're taking care of drivers? That's what we're trying to do. Exactly. So yeah, there's app activation, credit card, and plug in charge. Yep. That's very exciting. Yep. Can you speak to some of the challenges maybe of like getting all that to work between the car OEMs and the charge like an IANA? Yeah. Like what goes behind there? Is it a technical challenges or is it more like business challenges? What what goes on there? Look, there's a lot of like you, you can imagine a lot of moving pieces when you're dealing with, you know, different different types of tech, both in the in the in the vehicle, on the charging, there's there's software involved, there's there's, there's consumers involved from a customer experience, uh, experience standpoint and the whole UI. So we spend a lot of time at our development lab in, in Raleigh as well as working with our, our OEM partners at their labs uh, to be able to make sure that what we release into the market has been tested and proven. We do a lot of customer clinics as well, um, both in the field um, and at our facility to really make sure we understand what drivers are look, looking for before we deploy it. Um, and then when we do deploy it, we try to do beta rollouts first before we roll it out at full scale to ensure that what we're rolling out is going to work the way we intend it to work. Um, so we've got a lot of great feedback. You know, and you saw this week we announced um, a, a new author, authorization limit where before we were charging uh, $50 pre-hold, we've reduced it to 30, right? So everything that we do is to interact with drivers, understand what the pain points are, and then put that back into the product and back into the field. Yeah, I, that must have been like really helpful feedback. I actually saw that today, um, yesterday, we stopped in Scranton, I saw the $30 yep. authorization, and we were driving here in our Tesla, so I thought like, uh, I had to put in the IONA manually into Trip Planner because Tesla still prefers Tesla. Right. But hopefully that'll change soon because when they see the quality of your network and how easy it is to interface with it, I'm really hoping for you, you guys can come to some sort of Absolutely. agreement yeah. to really dial that in there because out of all the non-supercharger providers for Teslas, IONA is the next best choice because you have native NACs, yep. you have the capacity to support more cars, um, so I really hope you guys at some point can come to an agreement to really I appreciate the feedback. have more Teslas. Uh, right now, we're trying to get the word out because we really like your, your guys, what you guys no, are No, I appreciate doing. the feedback. And, and that means a lot to me and the rest of the team because every, every day, I tell you, every day the team we have is out there pushing to make sure we're delivering the best customer experience in the marketplace. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, what car do you drive these days? So we've got two EVs at home. One yeah. is a Tesla and one is a BMW i4. Oh, uh, yeah? Yep. Uh, that's awesome. And do you... Do you are there any cars on the market coming up right now or this year that you're really excited about? There's, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I think, you know, I've been in this industry going on almost 13, 14 years now, and to see the progression on the, on the technology, not just the charging, but on the, on the car side, right? The range, the types of vehicles being offered on the market, it's, it's really incredible. So I'm excited about what next year and the year after hold in terms of the different products coming out. And really what that means then is a higher adoption rate as you start to hit different entry points in the marketplace for consumers. That's awesome. And finally, uh, well, of course, we're from Canada. Yep. Um, our charging is not the greatest there, so I have to ask. I get the question all the time. When are we going to Canada? Exactly. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you're finished here or when you have a good network, are you 
Are any plans to come to Canada look, one look, day? Yeah, no, look, Canada is definitely in our plans. Um, it was important for me and the team that what we wanted to do first is to make sure we had foundational scale of the company and of the network here in the US first before we got distracted in terms of trying to expand outward. So right. it is definitely still in the cards, it's definitely in our plans. You know, I think you'll see stuff at some point around what that looks like, but we've got a little more work to do to kind of hone in on things and d deliver the scale here in the US before we, we go up uh, up north. Yeah, we're, I'm going to really look forward to it because just two weeks ago, I drove a Silverado EV and okay. I was trying to hunt down chargers that can actually deliver 350. Sure. And I was really struggling. Yep. Like it's, it might be better in Quebec. There's more providers there, but in Ontario, in our neck of the woods, I could not find any solid, even what is labeled 350, nobody could de deliver. So like, um, I, would, I would really look forward to uh, it's, good it's good feedback. It's seeing good, you guys in Canada. Definitely good feedback. Uh, whenever you launch, that. we'll be there to cover it. Um, That'd be awesome. Yeah, but thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate nice the time. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Hey guys, we're on a road trip. We're going to be passing Scranton, Pennsylvania. I've passed Scranton many times before, but I've never actually stopped inside of Scranton. It's of course the setting of one of my all-time favorite TV shows, and. Um, but today, I know there is a, an Iona station in Scranton that opened uh, last year at the end of the year. It was one of their first stations. But um, I think there's been an update to it this year when they installed the new canopy, so we're gonna check it out. But of course, today we're in our Model Y. And of course, uh, Tesla's trip planner does not include charging stops other than Tesla supercharger stations. Maybe they do that for consistency, maybe not. Hopefully that'll change. We do have in my settings here, um, include third-party charging stations. So this is a more recent setting that's been added, but it doesn't include them um, anything other than Tesla superchargers in the actual trip planning. Um, however, today I found in the map, I found Iona charging station in Scranton in the map, and I've manually added this as a stop. And uh, we're navigating into it right now. And I'm happy to report that it is actually now preconditioning for fast charging. So it is recognizing that the Iona Scranton charging station is in fact the charging station. So the battery is going to be uh, warm and ready to accept maximum charging speed. That's a really big improvement from uh, before. Here we are just north of Scranton. I think the Iona station is in this uh, sheets over here super convenient location because we're just off of interstate uh, 81 here now where do they actually put it? oh here it is it's behind this truck there's got to be a this big canopy over here on the right here we go powered by Iona sweet so these are the Alpatronic HY 400s uh, looks like 10 chargers or tell 10 dispens five dispensers, 10 plugs, looks like six CCS and four NACs. It's nice to have a canopy and uh, not many charging stations have it just for like our protection from the elements. Let's go plug in. Let's see if the cable management will reach. Oh yeah, I'm kind of using I'm using the sign over here as uh, my cable management solution. Now there's a screen over on this side on these Alpatronic units. Plug in your vehicle. All right. We are, what are we at? 1B. 1B. Select NAX 1B. Now let me get my card. Tap to pay. Thirty-five cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, that's actually oh plus tax. That's pretty good. So now it says we're authorizing. There's going to be a thirty-dollar hold on the credit card. Approved. So I think this might actually be cheaper than the supercharger uh, down the road from here. How fast? Preparing to charge. So these uh, Alpatronic chargers. Each of these units are capable of 400 kilowatts, um, or when you have two cars, they could split 200 kilowatts for each car. Um, although like the Tesla did precondition for this, uh, for this charging session. So we'll see if we'll get what kind of speeds we're gonna get. 
Uh, but of course, Teslas are not exactly charging monsters. They're not gonna really max out this hardware. But it's still really cool to see that IANA is really building out their network. A lot of their sites have like eight or 10 dispensers, which is fantastic. That's how many we need for like a, a growing charging network. A lot of the Electrify America stations have like four, maybe six, some have eight. So this is a really big improvement. Oh, here we go, we're charging now. 22%, we're at 208 kilowatts, pretty sweet. Charging detail. We have our voltage, 379 volts, almost 500 amps. Here we go, 500 amps, we've hit it. And the curve is looking like we plugged in a 20%, so we should be able to get a pretty good charging session. So here it is, the new canopy on the IONA station here in Scranton. Pretty sweet, uh, we're charging up now. So here we go, more customers, more business. That's awesome, good to see. Um, so this is of course part of the Sheets gas station here. So that's what we have here for amenities. Looks like there's a car wash here as well. I don't think this F-350 is electric. What do you think? Now, what I would really love to see is actually Tesla uh, team up with IANA to do plug and charge. So then you would have a very seamless experience like you do at a supercharger station where you just plug in and you get billed on the Tesla app. Um, once they figure that out, I think there'd be no reason not to include IANA stations in Tesla's trip planner because IANA is one of the very few networks who has the expertise, the hardware and the scale uh, because they put so many charging stalls at each each starting station. I think this would be a really great addition for any road tripping. Active session, we are on this one, 55% max. Our cost, kilowatts delivered. Let's go to charging detail, uh, typical Tesla charging curve right here. So we hit 223, uh, we were not really that low. And then we were tapering, tapering off at around 90 kilowatts right now. It gives you uh, 20 to 56 percent. I like this, your average kilowatt, uh, your kilowatts over the charging session. Uh, this is really cool to see over your charging session because of course, once this number gets too low, you kind of know it's time to go and uh, uh, charge or hop onto the next charging session. Uh, we gotta figure out how long we're we gonna spend here. Maybe we'll go get lunch after, uh, but I'm really impressed with uh, Ayana, they're super aggressive build out and the size of their charging stations. I like the amenities, I like the canopy. Uh, really good job Ayana, I'm looking forward to visiting more of your sites.